Good morning, my friends. This is Angie Stewart, and I'm happy to be here today with the Conscious Living family. We are live. Today is Sunday, 11 a.m. We have our lectures, our studies in English. So welcome, welcome to all of you. Uh, I hope uh, you are having a wonderful Sunday morning and you're going to be here with us learning, improving a little bit more as we have been doing throughout this uh, pandemic time that we are all online. But uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. We are able to face uh, challenges and difficulties in a very good way. Technology is helping us. So yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. So if, uh, if you can hear me, if you can see me well, please just let me know, write something so I can uh, understand the sound is fine. I hope it is fine. So as we always do, we start with a, a reading and I will be reading this book today, Our Daily Bread. And the last one will be 89 Blessings. So let's go. Blessings. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because the son of man. Jesus, Luke 6.22. The problem of the blessings requires serious reflections, therefore be interpreted as a resolved question in the framework of knowledge. Jesus confers the credential of blessing to the followers that share with him the afflictions and the tasks. Notwithstanding, it is important to point out that the master classifies sacrifices and suffering as education and redeeming blessings. It is necessary then to know how to accept them. This or that individual will be blessed for having created goodness within material poverty by finding happiness in simplicity and in peace, for knowing how to maintain a long and divine hope in his heart. However, what about the sincere adherence to the sacred obligations of the title, the master in the supervision that characterizes his teachings refer to the eternal blessings. But there are a rare few that get close to them with that perfect understanding of a one who approaches an immense treasure. The majority of the less fortunate on the terrestrial plan, upon being visited by pain, prefer to lament and despair. If they are invited to give testimony on renunciation, they sleep to improper demands and almost always, instead of working peacefully, get involved in undignified adventures in which they get lost in an uncontrolled ambition. Jesus offered a great deal of blessings. However, only a rare few desire them. For this reason, there are so many poor and many afflicted people who could be in great need in the world but who are as yet not blessed by heaven. Wow, very beautiful message and very connected to the moment we are living this difficult time of the pandemic. So we have to feel blessed, even if we are going through a turmoil, a difficulty, we have always to pray to God, to Jesus, to give us strength, to be able to go through it in a positive way, understanding that nothing happens by a chance and the faith will give us the, the support and the help that we need. 
So my friends, very good to have you here. Hello, Juan, how are you? Gisele, nice to have you guys here. Welcome, welcome. So right now we invite you to close your eyes, relax for a brief moment, and let's do our initial prayer. God, our mother and father, Thank you so much for bringing us together here in order to continue our studies, improving our spiritist knowledge, improving our strength, helping us to go throughout these difficult times of the pandemic in the best way possible. We continue learning, we continue with our faith strong. Please help all our brothers and sisters who are going through very difficult times and they don't have this need, that's the faith, to give them support. We understand the Spiritism helps us so much, especially clarifying so many questions that are hard to understand. And at this moment, we would like to ask a special protection, a special guidance to our dear speaker of today, Murilo. So he will be well connected with his guardian angel and he will be able to deliver his message that he had studied in the best way possible to all of us. Please stay with us now and always and so be it. So my friends, very good. Again, happy to have you all here to continue our studies. And I will bring our guest of today, Murilo. Hello, Murilo, how are you? Good morning, Angie, good morning, everyone. I'm great, how are you doing? I'm very good, very good. Happy to have you here, happy to meet you. I'm happy to Even be here, it's, thank you. It's, it's not in person yet, but right. uh, we're happy to meet you. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this is one of the good things that uh, we have because of the uh, internet. We are able to connect with people from other through, states. Yeah, through through space and through time. <laughs> exactly. I'm in, exactly. I'm in a different time zone, right? So that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing too. <laughs> it's true. Here is 11. What time is for you? It is 10 a.m. here, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Oh, good, good. At least it's, it's one hour. This exactly. is very good. <laughs> well, uh, I will invite you to, to talk a little bit about you, but just for you guys to know. Murilo, he is a co-founder, I wrote here so I don't forget, of the Spiritist Group of Central Illinois. And uh, it happened in May 2017. Right, so very good. <laughs> yeah. So Murilo, you said that uh, you actually, you were here in Miami, you lived in Miami, and uh, you, you first started in Baltimore. Correct. Yes, that's right. I was with uh, with the uh, with the group uh, Spirit Society of Baltimore there in 1998 when they were just starting, and you know it's been so many years now. And, and yes, when I when I was in grad school and working for a little bit in Miami, I uh, I found Conscious Living, and it's a, it's one of my many uh, my many families here in the U.S. And, uh, and so thank you for the opportunity to to let me share my my reflections with you today. Ah, this is wonderful. We are going to be super excited. We are super excited to have you here with us. Thank you wonderful. so much. You're welcome. So, Murilo, I will let you be by yourself. Anything you okay. need, just to say hello, and I'll be your guardian angel for today. Sounds great, Angel. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm in good hands, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Again, as Angie said, Marilla Soranzo. I'm here in uh, in Champaign, Illinois, in the middle of the corn field. Like our corn is this way high right now. It's just being planted and and up and soybeans. So we're in the the capital world of soybean and, and corn. And and I work here at the University of Illinois. That's what brought me to the middle of the corn fields of, of Central Illinois. Uh, and for those that don't know, it's about two hours and a half south of Chicago and, and you know, a, a few hours away from Indianapolis. So we're in a good location, kind of quick, quick getaway to when we need that, that big city life. Um, but, um, but that's one thing I don't miss about Miami. I miss many things about Miami, the conscious, the uh, living, the, my, my family's in Miami. Uh, but I do not miss Miami traffic. I am glad to literally get from one one corner of my town to the other in about 10 minutes. So, uh, but again, thank you so much for, for having me here uh, this morning. 
So today's topic is time heal all wounds. And this idea of time is something that has uh, stuck with me for a long time. I'm fascinated by time anything that has to do with time. And when I think of the films and books that I love, that I love to spend time in, and I watch and rewatch and read and reread, they all have this aspect of, of time in common. So some of, some of my favorite movies are Memento, which is a, it is a story that gets told from, from backwards to frontwards, if you will. So it starts at the end and then you kind of learn, your, learn your, what happened to the characters uh, in, in a reverse order. The Hours, which is a beautiful movie that, that links three women across time. Uh, and it tells a little bit of the story about uh, Virginia Woolf, uh, who uh, is, gets to be interpreted by Nicole Kidman. Beautiful, beautiful acting. Interstellar, which is about time and, and how the time continuum is. And it's a movie about space with Matthew McConaughey. Inception, for those of you, Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio and, you know, and, and dreams and, and what is reality, but, you know, time is there present. But my favorite movie of all time um, has to be Arrival. Uh, which tells the story of when happens when arrival uh, when when uh, visitors from another planet come into our world and in true human fashion uh, we are scared of them we think they're up to no good and we we weapon up and we are ready to destroy them when in reality they are here to teach us invaluable lessons and I'm not gonna give any spoilers. I don't like when people do that. So if you haven't watched Arrival, do yourself a favor. It's actually, play, I, I double checked, it's playing on Hulu and Amazon Prime. So if you have that, maybe put that on your, on your to, you know, to view list when you, when, whenever you have a chance. And I'm fascinated uh, by all aspects of time. And I would like to share a few of, of those aspects now. So first, right, the way we perceive Exactly, with Amy Adams. <laughs> uh, but the way we perceive time differently, right? Time can move really fast. It can fly by, as we say it in English. Um, for for some for some uh, so for some of us in certain in certain situations, and in other situations, it time can really drag, can move really slowly, like a turtle. Right? Have we noticed that? I'm sure everybody has an example that they can think of. For me. As a gardener, and I, I love to garden, you know, it's true springtime here in Champagne. Uh, you know, so it's not too hot, not too not cold anymore, but also not too hot. And my flowers, my my vegetable garden is just thriving right now. But when I planted them as little seeds, really tiny seeds, a couple of months ago, and you start seeing the sprouts and you're like, wow, it's gonna take forever to to grow. And now I go out there and the spinach is ready to be harvested and the broccoli is coming up and it's just wonderful. And, and every year, and I've been a gardener, a gardener now for, for many, many years, and every year I'm taken aback and surprised by how, how quickly, you know, we think that, oh, that little plant is, you know, it's gonna take forever. And you blink an eye and, and they're, they're fully mature. And as Angie has already said in her present and her uh, opening remarks, and also as, as we are experiencing this pandemic for over a year now, how many of us have perceived this pandemic to go by really fast at times, to go by really slowly at many times? I know that in my work, and I've been working remotely from home, we, you know, me and my colleagues always reflect, wow, these days are just bleeding into each other. We don't know when Monday is and when Tuesday is and when Saturday's here, right? All these things are just, are just uh, all blending together. So it's, it's you know, we, we perceive time differently, the passing of time. Another aspect that I, I came to is that time is both, it is both infinite and finite. Right. So sometimes it feels like we have a lot of time in our hands to do the things that we need to do. So until but maybe that's true until we are just a few minutes from a deadline or a few you know, hours from doing something. Right. And then we are crunching for time. So, for instance, my me doing this presentation today, I actually uh, the, the topic came to me a couple of couple of weeks ago, over two weeks ago now, and I quickly, very proudly, you know, send it to Susanna and Susanna, I have my, you know, I have my topic. Uh, and I gave it to her and I was very proud of myself that I did it, you know, way 
way beyond the, that deadline that she needed from me. Uh, but, you know, being completely transparent, right? I, I, up until this morning, I was still refining and reworking, right? And it's like, now I'm crunching for time, right? I had all this time and I did my work, but it's always like, there's always something to edit, re-edit, redo it. So that also is very interesting that time as a resource you know, when you're starting a project, or if I feel like the project is oh many, many, you know, we, we have time, we can we can get to it. And then when you again blink your eye, it's 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 there and you have to deliver. So so again, thinking of this time as both uh infinite and a finite resource that we have. The other thing is that time is both a construct, a concept that we have, but it's also a concrete thing. So what I mean by this is that, you know, we can touch time, right? We can touch it, but we certainly feel its weight on us. Sometimes we feel the chains of time on us too, and we are petrified by moving it because we are running out of time or we don't have time enough, right? So it's also a concrete thing that, that causes us some stress, that causes us, uh, you know, some it just creates uh, some some anxiety on us, whether we have a lot of it or, 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 or very little of it. And the way it's a concept is that we as a human race or is, you know, is our society right now, we have come to an agreement on how we see time, right? Right now we're measuring our time in years, in months, in days, in minutes, et cetera, because we constructed that way, right? We have said that, okay, a day is the, the the time that it takes the earth to do a move around its own axis, you know, and from 300, you know, 360 degrees. And that's one day, right? For, so from morning to, to morning, right? It's one day, 24 hours. That's our, that's our concept. And then we agreed that, you know, then a year is the rotation around the sun, you know, and all the seasons, uh, all that. So that, so those are our, those are our concepts. But then we also have to think about, right? Like, well, it's summer. It's, well, it's, we're about to enter summertime, right? Here in the, in the Northern hemisphere. What about our, our neighbors in the Southern hemisphere? Our, you know, our friends and family in other, in other places in the, you know, south of the equator. They're entering their fall and winter there. So, so even this concept can also be, can also be challenged. But, in a, and also when we think about even in our planet, different cultures we count time differently there are there are societies that go by the lunar the lunar calendar and they 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 you know they they base themselves off of that off of that calendar um we count for us as christians right we see before christ and anno domine which means after christ so the the current the current year we've we've counted that way but what about other religious uh religious um uh, uh, brothers and sisters and, 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 and organizations that don't, don't see time that way. Right. Um, and then the Mayan calendar, you know, from the, from the, uh, from that ancient civilization that still gets studied today. And there's still, you know, um, influence some of the aspects of our lives and that definitely in certain, in certain cultures, maybe not ours in particular, but, but other cultures. So it's all a concept. It's all very, uh, it, it varies by, place and space and, 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 and all that. And then um, don't even get me started on how we measure time in light years, right? So when we say that a planet is 10 light years away, we are saying that it takes 10 years for the light of that planet, of the light that gets reflected from that body to, to reach us, right? To each our naked eye. So when we're looking at stars, when we can see Mars, you know, like all that, we're, we're, we're looking at, at light years. This concept that, you know, the light is taking a, a time to get to my eye, that's, I'm seeing them. So essentially what we're saying is we're seeing that body 10 years ago because it took 10 years for the light to get here. So blows my mind, right? And it still fascinates me and still I want to learn more and more and more. Now let's see what spiritism tells us. And I think the first thing that we know about time when we come to study and reflect on the spiritist teachings is that we are immortal beings. So to think of that we have no end that is one of the first, I think, lessons in time or the influence of time in our lives. As spirits, as spiritual beings, we have no, we have no end. 
but our time in the flesh is finite. This body, right, has 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 a timestamp, and that will perish, right? But we know our spirit does not perish; it continues. So we are, you know, we are eternal in that sense. Now, don't even get me started on God. When from the first first lessons in in the spirits book, right, that God has no beginning and no end. I have, I think I have evolved enough that I can wrap my mind around the fact that I myself, Murillo, the spirit will not have an end, but to think of a being that has no beginning, that is truly eternal, I don't know. So I'm not even going to go there. That's a talk for, you know, a, a true lesson, a true, a, 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 it could be like a conference, I think, a whole day conference. And, you know, uh, so it's, it really bogs your mind, right, to think of, to, to think about that. So let just, let that sink in, let marinate on that. And, what, you know, what does that mean? And then I wanted to turn on to our, you know, trusted spirits book, because we do talk, uh, the spirits book does address time too in questions 240 to 243. And I just wanted to read a few of them for you right now. So 240, question number 240. Do spirits perceive time as we do? And the answer is no. And this is why you do not always understand us when you ask for dates and epochs and the discussion that follows it. The life of spirits is exterior to the idea of time as we perceive it. The sense of duration in time does not exist for them. Years, which seems so long to us, appear to them as so many instants lapsing into eternity. So we in the spirit world do not perceive time as we do now in the flesh, right? And questions 241, 242, and 243, I'm not going to read them, but they are addressing the idea of how we perceive the past and the future. And the past, when they talk about the past, what's important to know, well, actually, when they're talking about both past and future. So the past, uh, when we are experiencing the past in spirit, as spirit, we, we do have an understanding of our past. We see it. And the same thing with the future. The future is a little trickier because the future really only belongs to God. And they say that in there. But we do have a sense of, you know, this future of where we're going uh, or the things that can happen to us. Now, when we are thinking about past and future and we bring them to the present, they become our present. I'll say it one more time. When we think about the past or we think about the future, we bring them to the present and they become our present. It's a very important lesson that, you know, I'm going to bring it to the, to the end here uh, towards the end of our talk. So, again, the, when you think about the past and you think about the future, it becomes your present. So, so, but to, the, the today, today's topic, I really want to focus on the aspect of healing, of healing as an as aspect of time. So the, the adage that goes that time heals all wounds, and that is a topic of our talk here today, right? I started by then thinking, well, can time really heal all wounds? So uh, after my talk, I'm, I'm here to, uh, sorry, after my reflections, after looking at everything, I, I know I'm here to tell you yes and no. And really the answer is, you know, spoiler alert, it depends with everything, right? It always, always depends. So, so also what are these wounds that we're talking about? And in my reflection, I've, I've come to the conclusion that it's the loss that we experience when a loved one discarnates. It's the end of a relationship. It's when someone disappoints us, betrays us, hurts us. The wound of not being able to forgive our neighbor. So these are these are you know these are these are deep wounds. It can also be physical wounds. But when we you know when we are physically hurt, and we are then grieving the the loss or or inability of 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 doing things because of 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 that physical hurt illnesses right those are those are all things that hurt us not only physically but i think even more poignantly in our in our psyche in our in our emotions so when we are hurt we experience grief and i think that was the best way that i could uh kind of frame um 
you know this topic today is, is you know is, is talking is talking about about a little bit about grief and just giving you a quick quick rundown on on grief and what psychology has to to tell us about the grieving process. So I would like to Angie, I would like to show the slides now. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. So so the first one is. Kubler Ross grief cycle, and again, very famous kind of seminal work on 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 grieving and grief uh, in the process. So, kind of starts, you know, when when that when the loss event happens, you start with with a denial. So things like avoidance, confusion, elation, shock, all that kind of hits you. Anger comes next, frustration, irritation, anxiety. Then you experience the depression, the overwhelm, the the sense of overwhelming helplessness hostility and, and flight, wanting to escape. Bargaining, you, you literally start bargaining with yourself about that, you know, so for instance, oh, if I, you know, if you please, you know, let X happen, I promise to be a good son from now on, right? Or I promise to be a good daughter, or I promise to be a better partner, right? We, we bargain with that loss. And lastly, is really what we want is the acceptance, the acceptance to to happen, which is the the time that we we have we have uh, we have arrived. Now, um, the other other research also suggests that it takes about eighteen months. That's the time there for most people to go through that cycle. And to also become begin to experience less symptoms of of uh, of anxiety, of uh, listlessness, which is a lack of energy and enthusiasm, anger. So all these things start to lessen. And it's probably when you start entering the acceptance the acceptance phase. Now here are some other models too that we can view we can view um, uh, the cycle. So. This one here, I like it because it kind of tells you, you know, you can be in the bargaining stage, but you can go back to anger, you can go back to depression. So it's really, it's really cyclical. It's not, it's not really like, you know, you go here, then you go there, right? So that's another way to look at Kubler Ross's, Lock Ross's model. The next one. So of course, with studies, you know, people keep adding on to these, you know, to these seminal initial studies. So of course, the, this one here kind of kind of brings you know all that Kubo Ross talked about and brought these into into you know into more into more nuances these different stages now these three things right there are stages on how we go through them and the next one I love this one because it says okay the left the left one is how the the book the textbook you know says how I should go into grief but this is really my experience of of of, of going through grief and experiencing it and then one that I, a friend of mine, when she learned that I was giving a talk about time and healing, she shared this one with me. That healing is not linear. But I also love the subtlety that the path is filled with flowers and it's filled with color. And if we could smell it, you know, uh, through the screen, we could probably smell the, the scent of these beautiful flowers too. That it, it, it is a process that is, you know, it's, it's beautiful in itself. Thank you, Angie. Those were all the slides I had. <laughs> and now we have to look at that as, as, as earthly models, right? These are human models. And I wanted, of course, for us to focus, okay, what is spiritism telling us about the role of time in healing? And, and I think that's where, of course, you know, we, we live, we are, we, are, we are learning these things through a spiritist view. So uh, I'd love to bring those to you now. Um, and of course, no no coincidences exist. But uh, on the book Our Daily Bread, that which was the book that Angie read uh, uh, from us uh, today, in chapter sixty three, in the chapter titled "The Lord Always Provides," uh, it is a chapter. I'm not going to read it uh, all of it. I just want to read the last, the very last paragraph because in that chapter, it's it's really um, um, talking to us about how. Our Father God is always ready to provide whatever we need for our spiritual evolution, and that is something that we need to have faith in. That we need to have, uh, um, you know, that, that we know that providence is 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 an ally uh, in our in our evolution. But the last chapter uh, really is a beautiful one that I would like to 
we can use now. And they say, nevertheless, do not forget that in the majority of the occasion, the initial assistance from heaven reaches us through the common path via anguish and disenchantment. But wait confidently as the days pass by. Time is our silent interpreter and it will reveal to your heart the infinite kindness of the Father who will restore the health of our soul through the thorns of disillusionment or the bitter elixir of suffering. Time is our silent interpreter and it will reveal to your heart the, the infinite kindness of the Father. So in this passage here, Emmanuel right, is reflecting on, 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 on this idea of time and how it, 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 it works with us to review things and to be our interpreter on what we are trying to understand from the lessons they are they are coming they are coming from all all sides in our in our spiritual evolution. So it almost feels like time is the separate thing that is telling us, you know, that we have you now that we have that is telling us that will tell us that we review these things, right? So it can be seen as a thing. Um, and it can also be that, you know, as time passes, we know we put distance between ourselves and these uh, events that are uh, full of suffering and loss and can help us understand a little a little bit better. Um, and then also when, you know, when I when I talked with my group about this topic this past Wednesday, you know, that was uh, there was some there were some um, there were some uh, reflections about, you know, time there, you know, if we're going to see it from a from like a grammatical thing, you know, it's almost like a passive subject, you know, that it's, you know, uh, it's, it's not time itself, but, 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 but it is us that have to do the work. And, 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 and that is in many ways, correct. The other, the other uh, uh, instant of time in the spiritist teaching that I, that I wanted to bring and I, and if Angie or anybody else in, in, in you know, in the audience, I, I couldn't find it. So there's a book in Portuguese called O Consolador, um, which I couldn't find an English translation to. I don't think there's an English edition to it. Um, so if Andrea is in the in the in the audience, she can she can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, which would translate to the consoler or the comforter, and it's really a, a, a book of questions and answers, much like much like the um, the spirits book. Um, but certainly, it, it was done by Chico Xavier and Emmanuel, and they'll probably be the first to tell you that, like, we're not like the the spirits book, right? Being one of our one of our uh, uh, masters' uh, um, uh, books that that come out, but it, it offers questions and answers. And in question eighty six, um, uh, there's a question about if Earth was created by a divine power, why did it have to go through so many stages of evolution, which lasted millions of years? In other words, why are we doing all this when probably God could just just created everything the way you know uh, He wanted? And the answer comes very clearly. So, in the infinite universe, the evolution of the spiritual principle, and they specifically talk about the spiritual principle, has to go beyond your limitations of time and space as it pertains to your earthly perceptions. Each individual's ach achievement is the result of the law of self-effort. Here's a new law for us to add to, to the, so the law of self-effort, self of putting your own effort into things. In the limitless pathway of creation, thus resulting in diversity of evolutionary stages of each creature. When we then understand that time and space are divine laboratories where all living beings are put to the experience of bettering themselves in a way that each living being is ultimately responsible for achieving their highest values of life. I see the kindness of our father everywhere in this answer. God could have very well created things the way they are right now, but he's, he's using of his kindness, of his mercy, of his love for us to really give us the time that we need to go through the things that we need to for our own betterment. I see free will, right? The, 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 the concept of free will all over this answer that it is up to us, it's up to our choices, our own self effort that's gonna, and it's gonna see us through in time and space as divine laboratories. I just love that. How beautiful is that saying, right? That we have these resources of time and space to to use, to manipulate to our 
to our betterment. And in this case, we're talking about healing wounds. So to use to use that to heal to heal the wounds that that we have. So here's where the good and the bad news are. So we have eternity because we know we don't have any in any end. We have eternity to get over our losses, to heal from our losses. And our eventual destiny is happiness. We also know this. It's the law of progress. We are going to reach there. So the grief and the loss and suffering isn't forever. Whatever loss you are experiencing now, whatever grieving process, it's not going to be forever. It's going to pass. That is the law of progress. But here's what the question, here's the crux of the, of, the, of the question, right? Do we really want to spend a lot of time grieving and suffering? Because we are owners of our destiny. So really, this all helps us realize the value of time in whatever way we perceive it or construct it. And in many, many spiritist messages that I've seen it over and over again, we are reminded that the best time that we have is the now, the present, and the best, the best place that we have is here. We can't put things off for tomorrow. We can't put these processes for, for later. They're, they're here. They're here for us to use it, to use it now. And in one of his talks that I, that I listened to prepare for today, Artur Valadares invites us to see time as an ally, the time that we need to heal these deep wounds that we all experience physically, emotionally, it takes time, but we are not running against the time. We really have that eternity to heal these wounds. But let's ask ourselves again, do we want to spend eternity healing? And as these messages, as, as this messages showed us just now, that we have to make the best use of our time, please, Listen to me carefully. I'm not saying that it is easy. I'm not saying that it's going to be a walk in the park, as we say it. It's painful and it's hard. But we are the only ones that can do the work for us. And we live in families, right? We live in society. And how many of us will probably give everything that we have to lessen the pain and less the suffering of, of, of our loved ones? And we are in the process of learning to also lessen the pain and suffering from others who might not be our loved ones. But if we can start with our loved ones, right? Like, but, but that, that is also for them to do it. The self-effort has to be there. The law of progress happens to everyone. No one is a victim. We all have to do our own work in our healing. Yes, we can be kind to those in the healing process. We should be kind. We need to be kind. But ultimately, the work is within ourselves to do it. And another movie, movie, you know, comes to mind as I'm, you know, as I, uh, as I move towards wrapping up the talk here. Uh, it's called Penguin Bloom, and actually, just just ha just happened <laughs> this morning to be in my group that we, you know, we share these inspiring movies with one another. And I had seen it, and I actually hadn't thought about it, the aspect of time in the healing process. But again, without too many spoilers. Uh, it's the story of a woman who who suffers a a, a, a crazy accident, um, and 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 now you know she cannot walk anymore, and also the story of a bird that comes to their family who cannot fly, and you see these beautiful two creatures going through that healing process. So put it on your it's on Netflix at least here in the U.S. it's on Netflix. So put it on your on your on your list there to see. How, how healing happens, you know, among different, different beings. So to go back to the central question in, in, in wrapping up, can time heal all wounds? It depends, right? And in one article that I found, the uh, counselor Worth Kilcrease summed the best, and he thinks that we should change that adage to not say time heal all wounds, but to instead say, it's what we do with the time that does the healing. 
And I want to, I want to leave you with uh, this piece, which I have heard many times before. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's no author to it. I think it's, it's one of the things I know that has happened. Um, uh, sorry, Monica, I just saw your comment. Uh, the name of the, of the counselor uh, is Worth uh, Kilcris. I can, I can ask Angie to, to, to spell it out later. Um, and so just wanted to, 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 to leave you with this piece from an unknown author that I, you know, that you might have heard already, uh, before, but that talks to the value of time to realize the value of one year, ask a student who failed a grade to realize the value of one month, ask a mother who gave birth to a premature baby to realize the value of one week, ask the editor of a weekly newspaper to realize the value of one hour. Ask the lovers who are waiting to meet. To realize the value of one minute, ask a person who missed the train. To realize the value of one second, ask a person who just avoided an accident. And finally, to realize the value of one millisecond, ask the person who won a silver medal in the Olympics. Treasure every moment that you have and treasure it more because you shared it with someone special special enough to spend your time. And remember, time waits for no one. Yesterday's history, tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. So let us use time as our ally in healing our wounds. Let's use the, the, the teachings and the gospel and all these wonderful resources that we have at our disposal to learn always about ourselves, to know ourselves well, to know what we need in our healing process as we continue our journey into our happiness. Thank you so very much for the time that you allow me to be here with you and sharing my reflections. And I think Angie's going to be back here and I think we're going to look at some questions or the two of us will talk, right Angie? So thank you again. Yes, very good, Murilo. It was uh, was very nice, great reflection to to all of us. And uh, yes, my friends, we are open to questions, comments, anything you would like to mention, anything you enjoy, anything you didn't understand. Please post there so we can talk Absolutely. about it. And until this uh, this happens, um, Murilo, very beautiful. I I really enjoyed, and there are so many things that come in my mind when we talk uh, about time just to start a book that is not a, a spiritist book but it's a wonderful book it's the power of now by mm. edgar toll yes and um he he tells us he tells us to live now because many of us live in the past yes. with some kind of negative feelings that the connect us to the past or in anxiety with the future what's going to happen right so we need to live now and have faith have perseverance be strong we are throughout the pandemic when it started nobody imagined was going to be over one year right and i remember in the beginning right in the beginning there were some funny videos I was receiving in WhatsApp and the people like, oh, the pandemic through Christmas, the pandemic through carnival, the pandemic, and we were and all laughing at it. Right, yeah. And it happened, yeah. it happened. Yeah. So it, it's important. Yeah, and Angie, thank you. Actually, you know, you, you, you brought exactly what I, you know, I forgot, forgot to mention in the talk is that when, when I read the, the questions of the spirits book, it's exactly what you said, you know, like to think about that when we are thinking about and, and they are saying it in a and I felt it like those answers were in a positive way. Like when we are thinking about the past and the future, we bring them, they become our present. But so many of so many times those things are filled, those things are filled with anxiety and with, you know, they're not they're not the good. But we can practice on bringing right the bringing the things that were good from the past for us to live in that and and and, and, and cherish those moments and to 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 literally visualize our better selves in the future, right? But, exactly. but for, some, for some weird habit as humans, we tend to do that with the things that will bring us negative. Yes. And yes. The, the, the answer in the spirits book was so neutral in that way, 
right? But it is a good, it's a good advice because, well, if you are thinking about those things, then those are your presence. So you are going to be living in that moment, you know, and, 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 and the now is so, the now is so important. And I, yeah. and, and I said, like, I've, I, you know, I, there are many, many messages in spiritism that the, the, the message is clear. The best time is now and the best yeah. place is here. You know, exactly. you don't have to wait. You know, we don't have to wait for X to happen to, to do something. Yes. And, and as you mentioned, nothing happens by a chance. Everything, no. you know. You need to learn the beginning too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we, we took decisions that brought us to, to this situation or it had to happen because of something we, we did in the past. Yeah. And um, I love your list of movies. So oh, good. <laughs> you have to remember to send me so I can put in our chat so everybody can have Absolutely. access. To, Absolutely. It's, it's very good to have good movies so we can actually uh, see them. Yes. And another good movie is Nosso Lar, Astro City. Mm -hmm. And the, talking about time, I love the super famous passage that uh, we have Andrea Luiz in the spiritual realm already. And he arrived there full of questions. He's asking without stopping. And his spiritual guide is like, listen, take this medication, <laughs> put it in your mouth, and keep it there. You cannot drink it. And he's like, That's okay. <laughs> and he like, I remember that now. Yeah? <laughs> and he leaves and he's like, and then he doesn't understand. And after he drinks the water and he's like, I have no idea why, but okay. Time pass. And then a companion come and the companion is exactly like him. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he's like, listen, take this water, put it in your map, don't drink. <laughs> And then we uh, we understand, ah, right. but uh, it is amazing when we reflect about that. It, uh, it uh, works to everything. Like when we are full of anxiety, we have so many questions, we can stop talking, especially me, I talk too much. <laughs> but uh, it also happens when you are angry and you talk immediately, what you're going to talk is not gonna be as good right. if you had your water. <laughs> <laughs> Reflecting in what you should say. Absolutely. So Absolutely. It's, it's, it's really time, it's really, uh, really good. Yeah. And, um, you know, we also have uh, Divaldo Franco, the very famous medium from Brazil, that uh, he talks about uh, time hills, and, uh, and, and of course, as you said, depends a lot, depends a lot, depends on what happened, depends when it happened, and depends who is in the process of a healing or, or passing the time. Right. But uh, he mentions one thing, if uh, your kid was murdered, the time is going to pass and you are not going to forget it because you don't have Alzheimer. You will remember that a tragic thing happens, but you have to work exactly as you said, we have an eternity to forgive. We have an eternity yes. to, to understand that uh, it had to happen. We had to go through this pain. And as I always like to say, pain is different than suffering. Pain, right. we all will have to go. We all have to go through it and it's very difficult. Yeah. But suffering is exactly what you mentioned is that thing like almost cultivating that, re reviving it. And of course, nobody wants this for, for eternity. Absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and Angie, I think too, you know, and when, you know, when I hear yourself, when I hear myself saying those things, right, I always have to, re you know, and that's why I always like to say that these things aren't easy. You know, we are saying though, we are saying them, right? And we, and I, yes. I say them fully aware of how, how yes. hard they are to do, right? But it's almost like we need that rehearsal of saying this, right? That it, it is hard, but it is possible. It is not impossible. Yes. And, you know, and, and, and I think t using the time as an ally to be kind to ourselves that it might not be today, but tomorrow you are that 
step closer to forgiving yourself, to being able to move on, right? Um, and and being and I think that's where that's where really uh, the mercy of, of of our Father, the lessons from Jesus, really have come, you know, in hand. And, and um, yeah, and and who who best of a of a you know I you know I didn't go too much into Jesus's role, but of course he's our master at all time, and, and it's always there with us. But let's. I mean, I mean, actually, interesting talked about to, to think about time in that story too, right? Of yeah. the one who comes to to teach us the greatest love of all time, but he, you know, he could he could tell what was coming his way, right? Even as yeah. his last supper and his you know those final days, he, he knew what was going to happen, um, and yeah. yet he chose to go through it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like the, the so it's uh, biggest it's... story of all. Yes, it's so, so important for all of us. Exactly like you said, you know, there is a, um, you know, the mediumistic meetings where we, we, we encounter spirits that are going through a lot of pain and uh, many of them could not forgive. So they are in the spiritual realm in a turmoil of feelings and, and it's really, really, difficult and then we have the the the, the counselor that uh, talks to the to the spirits right. and uh, and then uh Divaldo franco mentions this uh, specific spirit that was coming all the time to the to the to the meetings and always with this anger and he wanted to to kill and destroy a person that was still incarnated and then the, the the counselor is talking to the spirit and is telling him uh you have to forgive you have to understand only forgive you can move on and um and then the spirits tell him he did this this and this he murdered my family he raped my daughter he did and goes through horrible horrible things and then uh the job of the counselor is very difficult because you you have to help the spirit and uh, you have to to understand that his pain mm -hmm. and um and then uh, he he mentioned that was beautiful the counselor say i know i i understand and uh if i was in your shoes i wouldn't know what to do too but we we have to forgive and uh, and uh, maybe it's not going to be as fast as we would like. Maybe it has to be a little bit longer. Right. But of course, we we can never stop trying because we know this is the important thing. This is the step. But sometimes the pain is so big that it right. really needs time. Absolutely. And, and sometimes this time will be reincarnations. It's not going to be few years that uh, that uh, we'll be able to, to go through it so uh, Monica is uh, Monica is actually saying very difficult or I in VGI so yes pray and watch pray and be vigilant yeah yes that's mm -hmm. what uh, we, we need to do because it's it's depending on the, the problem it's it's not easy right. it's easy for us to talk forgive forgive yeah but uh, when we are leaving the problem and when the problem is big, then it's it's tough. Exactly. It's tough. Exactly. But but exactly as you mentioned, uh, we have the blessing of spiritism that uh, brings us so much knowledge, so much understanding of the past, of the possibilities of the future, Correct. of the life after this life. So we we we. We understand that we reincarnate in very close groups. So to help us to heal these wounds. Right. So this is this is another thing that uh, whew, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I, and I think the other thing that's coming to me now is it, you know and in the time of all this, right? When we are in the middle of when we are in the middle of the hurricane, it seems like again time is dragging. It's moving slowly. But when we are looking back, right? How many times even in our own um, in our current in our current incarnation right now, we look at some things that we have already overcome, and we, you know, we we say, "Wow, you know, like I that that was so much pain and suffering then, and I yeah. feel very little now, you know." And, and 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 we should count those as as huge victories. But then imagine in the it in the spectrum of eternity, right, when we are yeah. all the way in the front there, yeah. 
and we look to these to these existence like wow that was like a fraction of my time yeah. as a spirit as an internal spirit but it is important it's what made murilo murilo right yeah you're never discounted they're always going to be part of your fabric but yes. again put it into perspective that's just a small piece of yeah. of what i went through right and, and yeah. i think that, that provides solace that provides that provides healing you know putting things into perspective um, yeah, it's, it's amazing true. how how it's small true. our problems can can be when we put when we see them from afar or we see them, you know, and it might be a good exercise to do it as well. Yeah, we don't even need to go back in, no. in, in incarnations. Like no. when I, I think about myself when I was 18, oh, I yes. I said, or the idea that I really why i did that what? like i thought about i thought that was a problem i want to go back to that time because that was yes that was Me? easy living <laughs> exactly no, and, and many times you're like oh my goodness how come i said that how embarrassing i don't want to i want to go back and 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 be the Angela of nowadays. So yeah. uh, that's another thing that uh, I think was Chico Xavier that um, in one of his interviews, they were asking, oh, Chico, so when we die, we will look exactly as we are right now. And then Chico start explaining so many things and about Paris spirit. But Chico says something that uh, I was really like amazing that time, so many years ago. Uh, because I always thought, well, when I die, I will show myself like when I was the, the best, <laughs> my twenties, like, whew. and then she could says, uh, usually the spirit that's a little bit more evolved will show himself as if he was in his previous incarnation when he or she felt the happiest. Wow. And uh, I start reflecting, you know, I start like, you know, my happiest was not in my 20s. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> because when you think the happiest in work, in family, in everything, you know, when you're young, there are so right. many questions. It usually is not your happiest time. So I'm like, you know, I think my happiest is now. <laughs> so yeah. No yeah, twin. The power of now, absolutely. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Murilo, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Angie. And uh, thank lots you. of people said thank you. It was very interesting. Appreciate. Uh, we I we all appreciate. The comments. It thank was uh, really, really good. Don't forget to send us the list of the movies. I will. And uh, <laughs> I would like to invite you to do our closing prayer. Sure. And then I will do the final announcement. Sounds good. Please. So I invite everyone to close their eyes, to get comfortable wherever you are, and elevate our thoughts, minds, and hearts, and connect with God, our Father, Jesus, our brother and master, our spiritual guides, the spiritual guides of this wonderful group, Conscious Living Spiritist group, who are the work, who are the leaders of the work that happens every day in the hearts and minds that they reach through the advent of technology. We ask you, Father, to give us the blessings that we need in our lives, resources that are at our disposal that we may use them wisely and effectively to impact our evolution, to impact our betterment, always taking steps towards our happiness, towards our, our destiny, that is to be perfect spirits. Remind us to be kind with ourselves, to be merciful with one another, to always extend a hand to those in need, whether physically or in prayer. Never let us forget the power of prayer and the power of thinking of someone, of a group, and knowing that with that thought, with those vibrations, we send them what they need as well. 
the world as it is now needs healing and we need the time to do it. We have the time to do it and we have started doing it. And that we can be part of this healing process along with all of our brothers and sisters. And when we are hurt ourselves and when we are healing, that we remember what it was to receive the help and how great it felt. Thank you for everything that we have in our lives. Today and always, so be it. So be it. Very good, Murilo. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank it you, was you. a pleasure. And say hi to everyone whenever you see them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank see you. you. Soon. See you soon. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here today with our friend Murilo. It was really, really great. Thank you to all of you that have been with, with us here live. Please remember that our activities continue online. We have always the Sunday's activities in English, but we also have our activities in Portuguese that are on uh, Tuesdays. We have lots of courses going on, so the pandemic did not stop it. If you want to have more information, please visit our website, Conscious Living Spiritist Group. You can also go to our page on Facebook, and you can always go to our channels on YouTube so you can see all the lectures and, and many uh, activities that are happening. So soon, we hope sooner than later, the center will be able to open again. But until it happens, we still need your financial contribution. If you could help with any type of a donation. So whenever the center reopens, this money will be utilized to be able to rent our physical location. So thank you so much. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful weekend and end of weekend and week, and we see you soon. Thank you, God bless you.